These days, everybody is talking about the apocalypse. And here to talk about the apocalypse, actually uh, the book of Revelation, Brent Miller Sr., Brent Miller Jr. Uh, fellows, it's great to have you back again. It's a pleasure being back here again with you. you. And we have an important subject <clears throat> uh, right here. I have a Blu-ray edition of Decoding the Future uh, produced by uh, both of you. And I think it's an important uh, teaching series for the very simple reason that people do not understand the book of Revelation. And I talked about the, the word apocalypse. That's actually the, the name of the book. And in, in Greek it means the revealing. That is the revealing of the Lord Jesus Christ at His second coming. And, but it has become a word now that's in the vocabulary meaning disaster. Anything that's a disaster is an apocalypse. And of course we've got a lot of movies and so forth and so on. But you're here to set all that straight, right? Right. The, the uh, apocalypse has been taken out of context by the secular world, meaning, as you said, disaster. Yeah. But it really is a revelation of things to come, letting us know in advance what's coming so that we have hope and we know. As we see these things unfolding, um, we have hope and know what's coming. Now let's put everybody's mind at rest right up front. Uh, and, and I address this to both of you because when people hear the term the book of Revelation, they very often have the reaction, oh, well, I don't study that because nobody can understand the book of Revelation. It's just too complicated. <laughs> well, I, I think mm -hmm. uh, both of you would beg to differ, right? Ab absolutely. In fact, um, th this series was in production for four years, four solid years of research and production, uh, not only filming here with some renowned theologians, but also filming all throughout Turkey and Israel, looking at ancient scrolls, looking at the, the ruins of the seven churches of Revelation, um, it really diving deep into the book of Revelation like never before. In fact, you're featured in there, and, and, uh, uh, which was instrumental to um, just really providing this deep insight that people are lacking when they study the book of Revelation. And we've done a lot of public interviews with people on the street of their view of prophecy, their view of Revelation. And what we find is that a lot of common things do come up, not only amongst non-believers, but surprisingly Christians as well, especially within the Christian community. And, and, and these, these kind of concepts are growing. First of all, Revelation is a book of fear. Um, so many Christians don't want to study the book of Revelation because they say it's scary, it's a book of fear. Right. Even churches are pulling away from, from teaching uh, things of the end times, eschatology is, is what we call that. Um, and they're avoiding Revelation because they don't want things to be sens sensationalized or they don't want to, to instill fear in their congregations. Uh, and, and they're completely missing the point. So the book of Revelation has become one of the most, if not the most, misunderstood book of the entire Bible. Which was your motive, to sort of set things straight in a way that people can understand. And, and I love uh, the production values of Decoding the Future. That is to say, it's easy to watch. Uh, in fact, I think it kind of pulls you along because you've got it arranged in such a way that it asks questions and you, you immediately respond by saying, well, I really want to know the answer to this question. <laughs> and I love that. Yeah. It is also the only book in the Scriptures where God gives us a special blessing for all of those who read, hear, and understand the book. So you're actually encouraged to understand the prophecies in Revelation by God with this blessing. And that's given right at the very beginning of Revelation. It is indeed. And you know that special relationship that the Lord had uh, with the Apostle John? Uh, that, that was a loving relationship. And that really comes through. Uh, it, it's, a, it's a magnificent presentation, but there's a lot of relationship in that, in that book, particularly in the opening uh, chapters. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You know, and, and there's a lot of misconceptions um, amongst those that want to study Revelation. because a, a lot of the courses in, that we see out there, it's usually one theologian's or pastor's uh, personal view or set of opinions. Right. 
um, or it's a, a series in which uh, an individual is saying, as they go through the verses of Revelation, this absolutely means that. And so again, it's kind of, they present it from only their viewpoint. And what we find is that th this is just adding on top of that, that kind of approach to teaching revelation is adding on top of what is already a crisis that is occurring here in the West. It, it is an absolute crisis, and I wouldn't underestimate it, is that people not only don't understand Bible prophecy, they're rejecting Bible prophecy, the secular world laughs at it, and most Christians don't understand it, and they can't teach it to others that don't know what to make of it. And so there's when you look at the Bible, many theologians state that uh, around a quarter of the entire Bible is prophetic. That is a very large portion of the Bible that, that is prophetic. Sure. And is a, it is a thread of prophecies that is woven from the beginning to the end. It's crucial. And the reason why prophecy exists is so that God can prove that He is God. Because only God could provide prophecies that come to pass with unprecedented statistical accuracy. There's nothing like it in, in the history of the world, and yet most Christians don't know that. They don't know that that's truly provable um, statistically and with evidence, with archaeology, it is provable. And the secular world very clearly doesn't know that because the Christian world isn't educated enough to portray those facts to the non-believing world. Now, we're talking to uh, Brent Miller Sr., Brent Miller Jr., uh, whom you just heard uh, explaining what's in uh, this DVD or Blu-ray set. <clears throat> and the thing that I want to get to now uh, is the fact that when you put together a, a DVD, you do not go halfway. <clears throat> uh, the production values are just incredible and the thrust of imparting knowledge, teaching, is, is really easy to see. In fact, we have a short trailer uh, which I'd like to uh, run right now so you can kind of catch a little of the feeling. Uh, of what uh, these uh, sets are all about. Before the birth of our modern world, there existed an ancient warning foretelling of a sequence of events that will reduce our world to ashes. For those who know the warning, the signs are clear. For others, they'll never see it coming. Join cultural anthropologist and theologian Jay McCarl on a journey to decode the most frightening and misunderstood prophecy in history. See through the eyes of the ancient world by uncovering the remnants of those who first received the writings, exposing new evidence that changes everything we thought we knew about the Book of Revelation. This in-depth view sheds new light on a sequence of events that have already been set in motion, and the end is unfolding before our very eyes. This talks about hail, fire, and this is not the last such judgment. This is only the first. Is Revelation only a message of destruction, or does it hold the key to our survival? The whole message of uh, the book is uh, misunderstood wholly. In our final hours, will you choose to believe? Everyone fears the end of the world. And having seen that, uh, let's go ahead then and lay out Decoding the Future. Hey, well, first of all, this is a 10-hour seven-disc series that does come with a booklet, um, and it does include a free lifetime online membership, which we are in the process of continually expanding with the community, getting more questions and answers up there, uh, bonus videos so you can dive into some more lessons uh, than 
uh, or new things that are discovered. We'll put up new videos. So it's really a course that not only you can watch and share now, but it's something that will grow as time goes on. We're really building a community. And you know, we, we have gotten so much feedback from entire churches that are using the, the Coding Future series to teach Revelation in their churches. And we have found churches, some churches turning back to being able to teach it because Decoding the Future Ooh. presents it in such a rational viewpoint that it, their entire congregation is interested again. It, it, takes the, the, it puts the reason back into Revelation. Now, I've opened up my uh, Blu-ray set here, and inside the cover uh, is a little booklet. It's called the Prophecy Timeline Booklet, and it has not just a timeline, but kind of an overview uh, of, of the production itself. And uh, I'm watching a lecturer here on page one, and uh, who is this lecturer? What's he saying? And, and uh, what general tack does he take in his teaching? Uh, the host of the Coding the Future series, and uh, just to clarify, this is a non-denominational series because we are uniting the Christian audience with this course. So I'm it's glad not, you said that. Uh, yeah. it, it's not a, this, you know, a specific view or set of opinions. We really do want to be right. as, as um, uh, look at the big picture as much as possible. There is a lot that we yeah. do know about Revelation definitively. And there's some that we, we don't know. It's debatable. And we do bring up multiple views when we come to those, those areas in Revelation. And we have different theologians that will present those various views. But we searched the entire country for a theologian that could really embrace that concept. That was right. non-denominational, who was actually an anthropologist, means somebody who studies cultures. Mm -hmm. And he specifically specializes in ancient Middle East culture. You know, why they did what they did with Christ's parables in the first century. What is it that the people really heard? And this is absolutely key to understanding like Revelation. Um, and also uh, he is an expert in apologetics, which is simply um, being able to present evidence to defend the faith or right. to prove why the Bible has validity, which is very important for speaking to the secular world and non-believers. Um, and so the host that we found goes by the name of, of Jay McCarl. Um, he's an author, again, anthropologist, an apologetist, um, a theologian. He, he's in the Middle East multiple times a year, uh, constantly out there studying uh, ancient texts and ruins. Um, and it, is, it was just absolutely a blessing from God that we found this host. So he does host the series. And, and I love it, by the way. That's why I kind of wanted you to talk about him a little bit, because uh, it's one thing to have a, uh, a presentation. It's another thing to have an inviting <laughs> presentation. <laughs> and this is inviting. I love the way he speaks, the, the way he carries subjects along. It's just very good. Yeah, I mean, one of the things that we sometimes don't like to hear, but we have to be honest with ourselves, is is here, we're all guilty of this. We look at Bible prophecy sometimes through an American lens, and we forget that we really are only 6% of the entire global population. There's 94% of the world that doesn't yeah. think like an American yeah. out there. And so when we look at books like Revelation, there's a couple problems of why we have so much division that we run into is that, uh, first of all, we do look at it through an American lens. And Bible prophecy cannot be fulfilled through an American viewpoint. I'm not saying that it, it shouldn't be or won't be. It cannot be. Because it, it, it absolutely must be through a Jewish Middle Eastern view. We need to understand what is it that they heard and they understood. Which is why one of the fundamental lessons that we teach at the very beginning of this course, before we even be, get into the book of Revelation, is... Uh, what did they think? It's not what did I think, what does our host think, uh, or various theologians, but what did they think in the first century? When Christ spoke, what did he mean? And that viewpoint really separates how we interpret a lot of the book of Revelation versus what Christ was truly saying. That's great. I, I love the way you say that. Chapters 1, 2, and 3 in Revelation talk about seven churches. Yeah. And we live in that church age, and the addresses to the seven churches are very, very important to understand what's going on in the church age. In other words, it has a beginning, a middle, and an end. And when you get to La Laodicea, that's pretty much the end of the church age. And then suddenly Revelation shifts gears, and it moves back to <clears throat> Israel. The, yeah. uh, the 12 tribes, for example, 144,000, who are selected and 
apparently preach uh, the gospel uh, worldwide, but it's the gospel of the kingdom. Mm-hmm. Because the church suddenly sort of goes away after the first three chapters. Mm-hmm. And so that whole gospel of the kingdom idea has to be enunciated. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's funny you should bring up Laodicea, um, because this is just a little example of how um, Western thinking isn't quite on par with what they heard in the first century. Yeah. In Laodicea, Christ spoke there to the Laodiceans, mm-hmm. and this is the, the famous verse that we've all heard you know, Sunday morning, uh, be either hot or cold, but don't be lukewarm, for I spit you or vomit you out of right. my mouth. And for most churches teach, that means be on fire for the Lord. How, how can I be hot for the Lord or cold? You know, either, you know, reject the Lord, make up your mind, but don't be lukewarm. That's a fence sitter, you know, and, and, sure. and God doesn't like fence sitters, right? And in fact, that's not only not only an America, uh, a Middle Eastern way of thinking, that is strictly an American way of thinking. Uh, they would not even have understood that concept 2,000 years ago. Um, Laodicea um, had a uh, they would get hot water from Heropolis, which was nearby, the White Cap mm-hmm. Mountains, which, by the way, we went there. We filmed there. That is in the series. You can see the aqueducts and, and, mm-hmm. um, uh, in the series, and it's phenomenal. So they, they actually had aqueducts that brought in hot water uh, from mm-hmm. these uh, white springs. mountaintops, these hot springs, and they would bring in cold water from the other side of the valley. 2,000 years ago, they had running hot and cold water, and they both had purposes. Cold was refreshing. You used it to wash. Uh, hot was also refreshing. It was therapeutic. You bathed in it. Mm-hmm. Um, and so the Lord is saying, have a purpose. Be hot or cold. Now, lukewarm water, well, lukewarm water was stagnant. It would sit there. And it was often believed that you don't drink lukewarm water because it can grow bacteria. It can kill you. If you drink lukewarm water, you would spit it out of your mouth. And so that's what Christ meant. Right. In addition to um, Laodicea, um, as part of the, the study for Revelation, just covering the chapters 2 and 3, the seven churches, as you mentioned, we actually go to Turkey. We take you to each of the seven cities, and we show you precisely what Christ meant by each of the seven cities and what he said. And it becomes crystal clear. It opens your eyes in a way that you wouldn't have your eyes open if you were just listening to a lecture or reading it. By seeing, for example, this city of Laodicea, it extends to each of the seven cities and what Christ said about them. And that's explained. Anything that where there could be a visual representation or to take you to some place in the Bible, uh, Jordan, Israel, Turkey, we actually go there, the host goes there and shows you exactly what was being spoken in Revelation and what he meant by those things. Yeah, and that's why I wanted to run that uh, trailer a, a, a bit ago because uh, that gives you the idea that, hey, I'm, this is going to be a travel log as much as an academic uh, right. exercise, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. I think that's why it took four years to get it done. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but, but there's a need. There's absolutely a need for this. And, um, and, and again, it, it addresses some of the other disturbing things that we're seeing, like uh, getting back to some of the things that we hear not only from non-believers and Christian audiences, um, that I think you, you, you've even, would, you would agree with this, is that many people say it's too complicated to understand. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, it's too uh, ambiguous with the symbolism, and it could, you know, mean anything. And so, you know, and they compare it to other prophecies like Nostradamus and these other things. And, right. and yeah. again, that could be you know, can it be further from the truth? And so um, we do see th- this, this deep misunderstanding of what Revelation is. And I think a part of the problem is that uh, with that is because Revelation is often looked at as a standalone book. They'll take Revelation as somehow it's a separate book about the future that has nothing to do with the rest of the Bible, and they'll study it on its own. But you can't do that with the book of Revelation. And again, that's a problem we do here in the West, and it's not something they did in the first century. The book of Revelation, of its more than 400 verses, more than 200 of them actually refer to the Old Testament. And so in the first century, when John wrote the letters to the churches of Revelation, we like to think, or some of us may think, that in the first century, they didn't really understand what John was saying, and it was very mysterious. Mm -hmm. It wasn't that way at all. They actually understood everything John was saying. Maybe not the, the full picture because a lot of these things haven't occurred yet, but they understood 
the fundamental basics of what John was saying and why. Something we have lost because we are now 2,000 years removed from their culture. And you know, one of the things we've lost to a degree is the idea of the kingdom. <clears throat> because you, in the New Testament you have Jesus coming the, uh, to his people being rejected. You have the birth of the church, the rise of the apostles, and you go through that little historical period and get to Revelation and boom, it jumps ahead. And uh, <clears throat> when it does, it's talking about the coming of the kingdom. So you have to be theologically, uh, should I say, uh, well-trained or, or theologically well positioned in order to understand that jump, and I think this right. this presentation makes that very clear. Mm -hmm. A lot of revelation, um, it's a continuation, uh, like Brent said, it has references to over two hundred different verses in the Old Testament, right. which are again prophetic, uh, being that the scriptures are approximately twenty five percent or more prophetic. Revelation is not just an extension, it's interwoven with many of the prophecies of the Old Testament. In fact, um, Luke, Matthew, and Luke also are intertwined with Revelation. So that you have a continuation of prophecy. Now, the, the, y y we see Revelation as not just a continuation, but an integral part of what's coming. If you look at the entire scriptures as a whole, you can take any person in world history, place them in a uh, part of world history, say even 1000 BC. And if they look at the scriptures, the New Testament didn't exist, but if they look at the scriptures, mm -hmm. they see prophetic events that are told to them of what's going to happen in the future. They're now looking at those same prophetic events as we look at Revelation. Right. Yet, um, when we now look back at those events that happened for them, we see that it is history. We now look at the events that are happening for us as questionable. But there is over 2,000 prophesied events in the scriptures that have already come to pass. There's about 300 that came to pass at the time of Jesus. And they were fulfilled perfectly at His first coming. Hmm. The remaining 500 prophecies are intertwined throughout the Bible. Most of them are in Revelation, but there's quite a number uh, scattered throughout the minor prophets and Isaiah, Jeremiah, and in the Gospels about the future events. Those 500 prophecies must come to fulfillment, all of them, within the last generation. Most theologians believe the last generation started when Israel became a nation. There is a debate, of course, as to what is the length of a generation. Is right. it 80 years? <laughs> is it 120? Yeah. It's almost not worth debating, uh, simply because if the last generation started in 1948, we are definitely in the last generation. In fact, I would say that we are nearing the end of the last generation. So you're looking at 500 prophecies that will be fulfilled in the future that uh, Decoding the Future does discuss chapter by chapter as it moves through uh, Revelation. Uh, the interesting part about these prophecies, in order to fulfill these prophecies, since you have a series of prophecies, there's always a setting up of uh, world events, uh, economics, political, religious, social. Uh, you see the framework of the world changing to merge into a framework, various separate frameworks that will be instrumental in fulfilling these prophecies. That framework is very, very carefully uh, discussed in detail in the coming convergence. Right. And so from the coming convergence, which is showing the framework of fulfillment of future prophecies, which you can see right now in the world happening around us, it lays the more detailed um, description of the specific events that are coming in the future in the Decoding the Future series. And uh, let me just take a moment uh, to, to hold up uh, Decoding the Future in Blu-ray and DVD format. Uh, and there are seven uh, discs in each one of these. And by the way, each one of them includes the Prophecy Timeline booklet when you open it up to kind of give you a, an overall picture. And <clears throat> what we are doing and what we always love to do here at Prophecy Watchers is uh, offer you a package. And we have uh, the Decoding the Future package. Uh, your choice uh, of either DVD or Blu-ray 
And uh, when you actually order this, you're going to get a bonus, which I'm going to pick up here if I can find the, the fingers to do it. And what we have here is a free coming convergence, either Blu-ray or DVD, added to this package. We're calling this the Decoding the Future package, and we're offering Decoding the Future at half the price uh, that we have in previous presentations. Uh, let's talk for a moment about the bonus feature, the coming convergence, mm -hmm. in a minute or so. Yeah, well, uh, the coming convergence was recently the number one documentary in America. And it also has recently won six Hollywood Film Awards. I know what you're thinking, Hollywood. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Can anything right. good come out of Hollywood? <laughs> right, I, I hear you. Um, but what's very interesting is that that's actually kind of a testament to what we're trying to accomplish yeah. here at Ingenuity Films by using apologetics, which is reasoning statistics to prove biblical validity, in that the coming convergence proves that the convergence that Jesus spoke about with wars and, and, and economics and, and all the various tiers that would be converging that would end up triggering, triggering the tribulation is statistically happening now beyond any doubt. You don't have to take it by blind faith. It's proven that it's happening. Um, and so it made such an impact that even secular audiences in Hollywood were affected by it. And that's wow. really our goal, yeah. is to not only educate the Christian audience, but to have the Decoding the Future series and the Coming Convergence be ministry tools so that people mm -hmm. take another look at the Bible like never before. Well, and you've well said it, and I totally agree with you. The, the formatting, the presentation, it's very professional, first-rate, uh, decoding the future, the bonus is called the coming convergence. And this is an emotional presentation that will carry you along. Uh, by the way, you'll receive the Prophecy Timeline booklet too in uh, the Decoding the Future package. <clears throat> and that's going to be uh, offering you the opportunity to get this seven disc set with a bonus for half the price that we've offered it before. We've got about a minute now, and how would you like to uh, kind of bring things to a close? What do you want people to know before they open this, these packages and look at them? Well, I think not only does this speak to Christians directly that want to dive deeper into Revelation than ever before and actually understand why it does affect us, why it's crucial for us to understand it, why Jesus told us to watch for the signs, to have he oil, did. to be ready. Mm -hmm. um, you have to really understand Revelation from an ancient biblical view and not a modern 2,000 year removed view. Yeah. And Brent, you mentioned something a moment ago that I'd like to repeat and that is uh, that there is a blessing for reading the book of Revelation. Indeed, there is a blessing. Um, Jesus Christ himself gives the readers, the hearers, and the, those who understand a blessing right at the beginning of the book. Well, this presentation is a blessing, and we do appreciate your coming here and talking with us about it. Thank you. Thank you. And speaking of blessings, uh, may the Lord bless you both. And in your footsteps from here on out, I can't wait to see what you're going to do next. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I'm Gary Stearman. Hey, keep watching. We are... Thanks for joining us on Prophecy Watchers. You can find us on the web at prophecywatchers.com. In the meantime, keep watching everybody and we'll see you soon.